This is AP YouthNet. Welcome to the AP YouthNet talk show where we look at key issues regarding youth employment in Asia and the Pacific. From the International Labour Organization, I'm Matthew Koniak. Today in this show, we'll talk about Singapore. Its youth unemployment rate at 6.7% is very low, among the lowest in the region, and it's also half the global average. To talk about this, I'm very happy to welcome to the show today the Minister for Manpower of Singapore, the Honourable Mr. Tan Chua Jin. Would you all like us to worry about your generation when you grow up? Or should we just spend and commit now and worry about that later? Minister Tan, thank you so much for taking time off your busy schedule to come and join us on the show today. So I just mentioned in the introduction that uh, uh, Singapore has just about 6.7% youth unemployment rate. Uh, we talk about the competitive education as one of the key factors, technical uh, skills training system, labor market information uh, being available to young people, as well as labor market policies. Any key reasons why you see this rate being so low? Well, I guess from the onset, I mean, Singapore has always uh, considered itself uh, a country, a uh, city state that really doesn't have much resource. Um, so a lot of what we are able to largely can be generated from the, it's only generated from the economy. Um, so from the day one, I guess when uh, we became independent, I think we were always concerned about jobs creation. How do you provide employment, not just for young people, but for all Singaporeans. So the first and probably most important thing for us is to how do you create conditions for the economy to do well. And we have very low unemployment overall, not just youth unemployment. Uh, so that's one step. Secondly, when the opportunities are created, uh, we need to be able to equip our people with skills and abilities to take up those opportunities. Uh, so that's where the education system comes in. The formal education comes with the primary and secondary uh, portion of it, which is what I would call the long cycle, where you don't change it too frequently. Uh, then the medium cycle, which would be really a tertiary education, where that's your polytechnics, uh, what we have ITEs, our Institute of Technical Education, our universities, where we work very closely for my ministry, uh, with the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Trade and Industry to understand where the economy might be going, create the necessary modules, courses for students to be able to embark on tertiary education. Last part is what we call continuing education and training, where that's after formal education, and where we would encourage Singaporeans to take up what we call lifelong education. Because the world is changing very fast, so you need to be able to change and add in modules very quickly so that they can adjust themselves as the world changes. And the last one is to create the conditions for a fairly flexible labour market so that uh, people can adjust, businesses can adjust. And I think by and large, this has enabled us to keep unemployment low, jobs creation high, and correspondingly, youth unemployment low as well. And, and Minister Tan, uh, uh, Singapore has always been also called for being very successful in attracting migrant workers at really both ends of the spectrum, the, the lower skilled migrant workers, but also those higher skilled expatriate working in finance and other industries. But today, some refer to potential threats or dangers, particularly also maybe ahead of the opening of the ASEAN economic community next year. What do you make of that? Now, the concerns really comes on a few fronts. If growth in foreign labor uh, is unfettered and not managed carefully, the numbers can grow too quickly. Uh, and that can cause a physical strain on the infrastructure. Uh, and in some instances, if it grows too quickly, too fast, uh, it could also cause social strain. So that's a downside if you don't manage that carefully. Uh, the upside really would be tapped on the full potential of people who can come and contribute to the system. And we found that actually, if anything, uh, in periods where there's been a reasonably uh, high growth in foreign labor, it has also been accompanied by good economic growth good employment numbers, low unemployment, and in fact, wages were moving up. So in some sense, it's true. It, it, there is competition. It affects Singaporeans in a direct way as well. But on a net basis, actually, it's a net plus. I'd like to follow up on that point and talking about the fact that in Singapore, there is no statutory minimum wage. Um, and I'd like to talk about that in light of that creation of jobs and uh, for, for young people, of those migrant workers, the lower skilled particularly. How do you see that? Well, um, one of our forefathers, um, Sir S. Rajaratnam, yeah, this uh, phrase, which is, uh, we're a democracy of deeds and not words. And it's something that I subscribe to. I mean, we, I would say that we are fairly agnostic. Uh, we don't have any particular doctrinal uh, aversion towards minimum wage. To us, really, it's about finding policies that work, that ultimately delivers the goods for our people in terms of making lives better. 
Um, minimum wage remains an option if all things fail, uh, if we are not able to generate good opportunities for our people. But I think the verdict on minimum wage really is quite mixed. Um, for example, those who are in employment, and if you do have, uh, for example, whether policies like minimum wage or other policies that help enhance their wages and income, uh, that's great for those who are employed. The challenge really is, does it result in higher unemployment? Uh, you will find that actually some actually believe that by imposing minimum wage, it actually affects employment, especially youth unemployment, because for the younger folks, uh, where they may be quite new to the economy, they may, don't, they may not necessarily have the right to that experience. So for us, I think we track the numbers very carefully. The main thing is um, a range of jobs are created, opportunities are created, and we find that by and large, wages are moving. In real terms, in many countries, I think uh, there is wage stagnation. Uh, while it may be seem tempting that uh, minimum wage would seem like one step towards protecting workers, uh, but we feel that actually that might end up hurting workers instead, and we've seen that happening in some places. So I think the verdict is mixed. For us right now, uh, unemployment remains low, or employment opportunities are good, uh, wages continue to rise, uh, in reasonable terms, about 2-3% in real terms for the last few years. So we think we're pretty much on the right track. Um, but options remain open. Now, TVET, Technical Vocational Education and Training, uh, is regarded as something extremely successful uh, in Singapore, particularly through the IT, the Institute of uh, Technical Education. But some have reservations, uh, like, uh, like with anything. For example, I think that it's the, the movie director from Singapore, Jack Neal, who once referred to IT and used it, uh, a different acronym. He said, it's, it's the end. It is the end. Uh, does that mean that for many young people in Singapore, it is the last resort, the last option to come to technical education? Is there a need to revamp the idea that it's actually something that pro provides very promising careers? Um, well, um, I think for the ITE, uh, I think if it's, it's the end, uh, it's not a bad ending because actually if uh, many foreign visitors who actually visit the ITE uh, many find that actually it is comparable, if not even better, than some of the universities uh, in many other places. We are placing a lot of resources, uh, the infrastructure, uh, the facilities, in a way, is an easy part. But it's uh, reflective of the importance uh, to our economy and for our emphasis for our people uh, to strengthen our ITEs, our polytechnics. But if you are looking at uh, higher value added production, uh, in terms of looking at skill sets, but the feedback from many companies is that we do have a very skilled and able workforce. And that's, I think, is, will be our strength going forward. Uh, it will enable our economy to remain agile. And building on these aspirations of young people, many of, the, of those in the younger generation, uh, Generation Y, we say in, in, in the West, or some call it the strawberry generation uh, in the East, in some East Asian countries, are people who have traditionally been uh, overprotected by their parents and their very high expectations in terms of the jobs that they want, in terms of the, the pay, the salaries that they, are, that they are expecting. How does Singapore manage such high levels of expectations from the young people? Uh, expectations are high, and not just amongst young people. Um, I think that's always a challenge. Uh, because of the aspiration for academic excellence, we think that the only pathway to success is to achieve uh, university uh, education and degree. Um, but no economy can create jobs that can cater for you know, a workforce that's almost exclusively uh, graduates from universities. You, so you do need to develop many multiple pathways. Um, so you see in some of these countries that they, for each cohort, they have many university graduates, but many will be underemployed because not enough jobs are created for them. Um, we are not at that stage in Singapore. We do see the numbers increasing. The aspirations are there. Uh, but we are working closely with, again, the Ministry of Education, as well as Ministry of Trade Industry, and especially with businesses, to make sure that um, good pathways exist, uh, that even in terms of the way we hire, the way we view uh, abilities and skills, uh, let's not overly place an emphasis just on paper qualifications. But I think the effort continues to make sure that skills are there, education remains an uh, important emphasis on our part, job placements, something that we help to facilitate as well. Um, but, you know, there's always a limit to how much the government can do. I think we can share as much as we can. Um, but by and large, not too bad. I think um, Singapore is regarded as a fairly competitive economy. Our workers are well regarded, they're hardworking, they're resilient. Um, I think sometimes with social media, you do see the amplification of some of these instances of uh, strawberry, 
strawberry generation thinking, but I'm not sure it's necessarily necessarily representative of uh, most Singaporeans. And I hope we, we remain that way because what will happen is that the more pampered and the more soft we are, it will affect competitiveness. And I guess that's where the cycle will begin on the downturn and when you become less competitive. Minister Tan, I would like to thank you very much for your time today, Absolutely. for your insights uh, and uh, comments and, and review on the youth employment situation in Singapore. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And for our viewers, please visit us at apyouthnet.ilo.org for more on youth employment in Asia and the Pacific. From Bangkok, thank you and goodbye. This has been an AP YouthNet production.